We Talk Fantasy is back. You can smell that. It's August. Fantasy football drafts are just around the corner. If you played high school or college football, you know that month of August, there's that countdown on the calendar. How many days left you had a summer before camp officially opened and you're running one-tenths and sprints and double sessions, which, by the way, are no longer a thing. But fantasy football drafts are starting up this month. Before we get into the fantasy football talk for this week, first, let's give a shout out to our friends over at Mohawk Honda. This summer selection is king. Mohawk Honda, stop over there and trade in your vehicle. So many times throughout upstate New York, you go to a car dealership, you're ready to trade in your vehicle, and you don't get back the money you deserve for your ride. Mohawk Honda will give you the money you deserve for your ride. Plus, their selection is better than anything in upstate New York because of all the changes that have happened over the last year and a half. You may head to your car dealership and not find what you're looking for. It is worth the trip. Whether you're out in Geneva, Syracuse, Watertown, Glens Falls, wherever you might be, drive down to Glenville right there. Kyle and I will show up. We'll sit there at Mohawk Honda and feed you the cookies while you wait and get into your new ride. Chet is too busy, but Kyle and I are close enough to Mohawk Honda. That's the service that we will give you. And Mohawk Honda, whoever it is, whether it's Greg Johnson, Cam McKenna, my guy hooked me up with my pilot. Whoever it might be, they will always go out of their way to please you. Like, we're going to do this fantasy football season here on We Talk Fantasy. Boys, here we are. Chet, Kyle, we are back. Training camps are underway, and I'm going to go right into it. I'm not even messing around. Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers are here. Carson Wentz is injured. Uh, Kyle, I'm going to start with you. Are we surprised that Aaron Rodgers is on this football field wearing a Green Bay Packer uniform to start the 2021 training camp season? I we think know, I, we know Kyle's answer to this one. I think I texted you guys like two <laughs> hours after we did the episode. I was like, are you kidding me? What is, <laughs> I, I, I'm very surprised about the Rodgers one. Um, that one blew my mind because like I, I thought a lot of it was just spoon. Like just he's not coming and this is all just a charade. But sure as shit, there he is. I was I was baffled. But, you know, good for him and – the pressure that he he laid out, um, that was incredible. Um, by the way, shout out Jake Kumro. Uh, he's with the Bills right now, so thank you. Hey. Second best. But but there there was a lot of, cool, of crazy things that Rogers was talking about during that. But yeah, I'm shocked. Uh, obviously, Devonte and Rogers both can, uh, the, and Aaron Jones and the whole Packers offense just went back through the roof uh, in value from a fantasy perspective. Um, the Watson thing though is is hilarious. I don't know if you guys saw the reports or anything. And they listed him as the fourth string quarterback, and he was playing scout team safety, something like that. So you know <laughs> Watson is not playing a down for the Texans. So um, that all that news confirms. Stay the heck away from uh, Watson and go get Rodgers and Devontae. Yeah, see, Khan does a nice job there on the fantasy perspective of it. And Chet, I know this is usually a fantasy focused podcast. We talk fantasy. I think it's fair because your job is a sports news director. You've been in many of these press conferences with athletes before. Give us that insight of what Kyle just said, how unfiltered and how rare it is to get an interview like that in that type of setting. It's funny because I go back and forth. Like we always want athletes to be real. Like we hate coach talk and the guys that say, oh, I don't mean to be cliche, but I'm going to be cliche. Like it's the worst. But on the flip side, didn't he kind of sound whiny? Like, I get it. Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks, not only of his generation, but maybe of all time. So I get it. And it's, it's such a different position in football. Like you can't win without a quarterback. We see it every year with who are the top five picks, three of them are quarterbacks. Like we we know how important the position is, but also like your job is to play quarterback. We didn't, we didn't bring you in to be the GM, to be the coach. He's already fired one head coach. Are they on their second GM? It's hard to keep track of, but like, I don't know. I'm listening to it. And like, I literally am on the fence because part of me is like, okay, the Packers effed up because they knew what he wanted. And and like, to an extent you have to make them happy. Uh, And they completely, it sounds like they just disregarded with all of his requests. And that was just stupid because some of those things were easy. Like, is it hard to send Aaron Rodgers a text and be like, Hey man, we're thinking about this. Like, what's your input? You can still say, hey, we're still going to go in that direction, but at least call the guy, make him feel a little involved. But then on the other side, I think he's just being, he's, he's being a diva. Like, it's just, 
I, I don't know what the Packer front office does now. They're trying to do damage control and make sure they get him for a season, and then it's most likely done after that, the last dance. Um, so part of me is like, wow, that was refreshing to get real insight. And the other part of me was like, wow, you're being a bitch. So that was, yeah. that was a big takeaway. Absolutely. And that last part there, along with him being a bitch, is what we heard from people who are Packer fans and not Packer fans. Like, if you want to get the most frustrated if you're a Green Bay Packer fan because of that interview, you are more than welcome to. Because your quarterback got high, got offered the highest deal to be the highest paid football player in the NFL in the next two seasons. And he said no. Then he got up there and basically did a tell-all podcast, which I would have appreciated if he did on the Godzilla Media platform. We're all about that here at Godzilla Media. Tell-all podcast. But a uh, Packer fan can be pissed. Because they're like, I don't want to hear this. I want you to be the quarterback who's going to lead us to a Super Bowl. Get this out of your system. I don't want to hear this in October and November. I don't want to hear excuses being made. Go play football. That's the Packer fan mindset. From the fantasy football manager mindset, you are elated, kind of how Kyle is, where it's like, okay, you got Devontae Adams as a target. If you've got Aaron Rodgers, and we're going to get to our quarterback rankings here in a second, how, if at all, it's affected those, you're happy. Because now your mock drafts and your evaluations have at least have more clarity going forward with these quarterbacks. Before we get to those quarterback rankings, though, I do want to touch on the interview. To Car- uh, interview, Maybe it would be a tell-all interview with Carson Wentz. I'd like to hear that about Philadelphia. The injury suffered by the Colts quarterback. Chet, I'm going to start with you. Injury or not, especially in one quarterback leagues, were you even going to consider rostering Carson Wentz this season? No, not personally. Um, yeah, if it's a one quarterback league, I mean, he's far outside the top 10. Um, it is interesting, though, that we're two years removed from him, him being a legitimate fantasy quarterback and just being a legitimate great quarterback. But we haven't seen that in a couple of years. Has it maybe even been three years? It's hard to keep track of how long. It has been yeah, three, three years. Three. Since breakout and then a lot of injuries. And then he completely uh, lost himself last year. I actually heard someone say in the radio, uh, one of the ESPN shows, um, he might have been the what worst. Is, what, what is radio, it by the way, real quick? No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those. You know what it was? It was one of those, like, you know how there's names of shows, like formerly, you know, Levac and Gaz. But I always find it weird when, like, someone's filling in for Levac and Gaz, but they still call it Levac and Gaz. It was one of those deals <laughs> where the hosts weren't even in. So it was the backup. So I, I couldn't tell you who it was. But he made the point. You can make the argument Carson Wentz was the worst quarterback in football last year. Like he was that bad. He lost games frequently for the Philadelphia Eagles. And so, yeah, now he gets a fresh start in Indy and gets reunited on that, you know, with that coaching staff. Sure, he could have a big bounce back year, but it's it's also a run first team. It's been that way for a while. Jonathan Taylor's a stud. They have depth at that position. And at wide receiver, that's very middle of the road. You know, we like Pittman. Is T.Y. Hilton's gone, right? No, no actually, he came back. Wasn't the report yeah. that he was going to leave, but then he actually is still there. Yes. It's just like it's a very, I think it's a very pedestrian wide receiving course. So I think the upside is pretty low for that for uh, Carson Wentz. Kyle, same question to you. Did you have any ideas or thoughts of maybe even rostering Wentz for 2021 rosters? I'm pretty sure I told everybody that I talked to. No way. I'm just, not, I just haven't been a big Carson Carson Wentz believer. It's like, I don't know. Maybe you draft him in the last round of the fantasy draft if he's there, and you know that the other top 18 quarterbacks are gone just to have that bench guy and there's nobody else and the the moon is all of a sudden about to come down on the earth so um i i was never gonna touch carson wentz uh in any of my drafts i didn't even have him on my quarterback watch list to even consider um so not really um all the injuries that he suffered i uh, the dude's a he's just a thin thin piece of glass so no way i'm i'm all in with chat nothing really more for me to add that one Three for three for me. And I think when we evaluate Carson Wentz overall, Frank Wright, the coach in Indy, even though he has not gone deep in the playoffs, I would put him as a top 10 coach in the league because of what he's faced. Remember, this is the coach who almost got the Colts into the playoffs out of the AFC South a few seasons ago when Andrew Luck retired like two weeks before the year. This is the same guy who was on that Eagles staff who led a backup quarterback to an NFL Super Bowl MVP award in Nick Bowles. He's a really good coach. And that connection with Wentz would have been good, but back to Wentz. Evaluate his career all the way back to North Dakota State. One season, he was good at North Dakota State. The other years, he never threw over 2,000 yards or 20 touchdowns at the FCS level. Philadelphia, that MVP season we're 
talking about. He got hurt. So he was good for like 10 to 14 games. I know we had that nice stretch early in his career, Pennsylvania and all that, but like one season total, he was good. We can go through the history of quarterbacks like Derek Anderson and Blake Bortles and all these other guys who had one, uh, Kevin Cobb, right? Like we've had all guys have one good season. When we look back at Carson Wentz, maybe that's what it was. Just like one good season. And we all reconsidered how we viewed him. All right. With that all being said, hold on, can I, can go ahead, Jack. Go right ahead. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like a quiz. And maybe you guys have heard it since the Carson Wentz news has come out. Do you guys know who the backup is? Jacob Eason. Jacob Eason is one. It's not the guaranteed backup. Do you know the other one? It I is not it. Jacoby. No, because no, Jacoby's it's... gone now. I think he's Miami. In... Yeah. I heard it, Chad, but I can't remember it. It's a rookie. Did he play in the SEC? Is it East? Is the oh, it's uh the kid from Texas there? Uh, oh my, uh, Sam Ellerlean, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Throw a bunch of vowels into his name. You got it. Um, so those guys, uh, yeah, I mean, this just goes to show actually how valuable backups are, um, because that offense, I mean, we have no idea what those guys are capable in the NFL, but there's also some other good ones. Do you know the backup for the Indianapolis? Nope. Tennessee Titans. So Ryan Tannehill goes down, which that is, we can all agree the favorite of the AFC South, right? Yes. Tennessee Titans. By far. With a, with a ton of fantasy relevant players from Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, Ryan Tannehill. Like, they're stacked from a fantasy perspective. If he goes down, Logan Woodside, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> let, me, let me look it up. I've never heard of this guy. Now, their number three is Deshaun Kaiser. But Logan Ooh. Woodside is out of Toledo. 26 years old. Wow. Dude. Has he ever gotten on the field? Did he did he get on the field for the Browns or the Broncos? Or has he ever been on the field in the history of the NFL career? Ooh, good question. I was gonna I guess, by the way, Charlie Whitehurst, who was Tennessee. Okay. Um, but I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any NFL stats. So I don't believe so. Um, Kaiser's more, definitely been on the field. One more. Uh what happens if Dak Prescott goes down again? And I think he's also injured right now. I need a shoulder injury. Is it the same? Is it that, that same rookie from last year? Not Danucci. No. Okay. They have him currently. Oh, not Danucci fourth time. String. Fourth string for Danucci. Oh man. Yeah. Well, it's not. Danucci was from. He was from Old Dominion, right? So it's the same guy. I was gonna guess the Old Dominion court. I think that's the same person. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. not Dalton, because he's now in Chicago. That's which I mean, that's gonna become a super interesting trade piece. Um, you know, now that you have Justin Fields, Mitch okay. Trubisky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tony Romo comes down from the booth and he quarterbacks the team. <laughs> Cooper Rush. Still the there. Yep. Wow. Cooper Rush. Isn't he out of Central Michigan? DMU. I yeah, mean. Central Michigan. Cooper Rush. Another ginger. They love the gingers down there in Texas. Uh, but Two yeah. Mac quarterbacks. Like, so there's other guys. Uh, first of all, you get super worried if something, you know, if you have one of those skill players and your quarterback goes down. And then that's kind of what we saw actually with the Cowboys last year. You know, when Dak Prescott was throwing for four hundo, everybody was feasting. And then when it was the Danucci time and, and Dalton time, like obviously a lot of the production just fell off for your Amari Coopers and your Michael Gallups and CD CD Lamb still actually produced pretty well at the end of the season. Um, but then you look at guys, you know, like these teams that actually do have backups, like, like the guy that refuses to take a number two in Jacksonville, you know, is, is, is that guy, <laughs> is the mullet, is he going to be on the move with Trevor Lawrence taking over in Jacksonville? Gardner Minshew, give the guy a trade, maybe bring him in as a backup. Who knows? Best tweet of all, or a best interview answer of all time. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, I had to read it twice. I was like, Did, what is he, what is he saying? I was like, okay, I got it. He's got, the he's got the market. Yeah, like he's got the marketability, though. You mentioned the mullet, the mustache, the personality. He's doing everything he can to stretch that out. He was fine in Jacksonville. Like he had a little bit of a good stint, a cup of coffee. And now, yeah, like you said, Chad, if somebody goes down in the league, he can have, I want to say Ryan Fitzpatrick like. And what I'm talking about is the yeah. magic of backup quarterback who gets the crowd and fan base and players on the field excited all together at once. For, for those of you, by the way, who don't didn't aren't paying attention and didn't see this quote, 
Quote from Minshew, in preparation for the competition, I haven't taken a shit in weeks. Number two isn't an option for me. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. The gold. It's so Absolute good. Gold. Oh, I love that guy. All right, so we, we we're going to kind of – that's right. That's exactly right. Now, we're going to kind of do these segments as we closer and closer to draft days for you. I'm calling these the rankings for positional players, and we're adding a little bit of reach or run, which we'll get to. I'm going to go first so you guys kind of see where we're going here and understand this. So, again, if you're prepping for your drafts, you've got your notes. Kyle, Chet, and I are going to go through our top five quarterback rankings, how we, if we had the opportunity to draft these quarterbacks, why would we have them in these spots? And also a quarterback we know we'd reach for, probably higher than they should be drafted, but we love them this season. And then a quarterback we're running away from, no matter what, no matter what round, they're not going to be on our roster. So I'll just go quickly through my top five and keep it nice and precise and locked in here. I go bias a little bit with my fifth pick. I got Tom Brady. Tom Brady had a really good season last year as a fantasy quarterback, even though he's in his 40s, all his weapons are back. The NFC South is known for offense, so even though he's an old man, I got Brady at five. We've mentioned Dak Prescott. I love Dak Prescott, man, for the yards, for the running attack. Dak Prescott, you go through all-time stats in his production. I know he's injured, but I feel like he can be a top-four quarterback if he stays healthy for all 17 games this season, which I have to keep reminding myself. I caught myself there. 17 games this season. I've got Dak at four. I've got Aaron Rodgers. Now that we know he's going to be playing for the Packers at three, he's too good to deny what he can do with Devontae Adams and the plays he can make. Kyle will be happy with this. I've got his guy, Josh Allen, at number two, the combination of, again, passing and running. Allen, I know maybe skill guys across the board in comparison to the other players I've just mentioned may not have that same type of running back wide receiving course. Stephon Diggs would like a word. But I got Allen at two. I've got Mahomes at one. I give a nice little hint there about the guy I love. It's Dak Prescott. I would reach on Dak this season because a lot of people will avoid him. And as I said in the previous week's podcast, I'm running away from Ben Roethlisberger. He was not good last season. I've got some questions about a rookie running back and what Juju Smith-Schuster wants to do with his contract and the AFC North a far better and far tighter the division than before. That's my top five. Again, Brady at five, Prescott at four, Rodgers three, Allen two, Mahomes at one. I reach for Dak. I run from Roethlisberger. Chet or Kyle, whoever wants to go next, or if you guys just want to react to it, the ball's in your guys' court. I'm, I'm a little surprised, to be honest. Ooh, I'm why is that? Which one? Lying on the – I guess I, I always get nervous with pocket passers. And, like, I, I Brady has burned me enough where I'm like, all right, this is the year Brady's going to stop being productive. And he's proved me wrong every year. I, but even though, like, I feel like he did have that drop off I mean, the last couple of years in, you know, New England, there was a drop off. But now with that Tampa Bay offense, it really is hard to deny he is still fantasy relevant because the guy makes good decisions for the most part. And they just have an amazing, amazing talent around him. But I am just so surprised because you're relying solely like that guy does not run. He cannot run. Unless you get that one yard little, you know, classic Tom Brady. Ah, uh, you know what? I, I think he had a bunch of them last season. But he's what are we at now? 44, 43? How old is he? Yeah, forty four so, this month. Like how many? How many more times? Like, I, I get that he's good at it, but it's just like in my mind, it's that unnecessary hit. Like he's gonna, he's getting hit where he doesn't need to. You have Leonard Fournette. You have guys that you can just hand the ball. Let them get crushed. So I don't know. I get worried about you know going that high or reaching for quarterbacks where you're every week going to be relying on passing yards and touchdowns as opposed to anything they can do with their legs, especially because I think this might be the most athletic fantasy quarterbacks we've ever had. Like there's usually been a, a few guys, but there are like six guys that can put up numbers with their legs. And that I think can separate. I mean, that's where you go from a solid 20 point week to the 35, 40 point weeks where you're like, you crush a team because the quarterbacks are so good. So I guess I'm going to jump in. And my number five is uh, Kyler Murray. And I actually originally had him at four, uh, slightly concerned with the DeAndre Hopkins news. I, I think that's a lot of smoke. I, I don't I don't really think DeAndre Hopkins is going to walk away from football over the COVID stuff. Um, but, you know, it gives me a little bit of trepidation. If they lose him, that offense takes a big step back. Um, 
But the guy's so fast. He's obviously a playmaker. You know, Kyle was super down on him for the most part last year because he doesn't literally like his style. You know, the accuracy is still a big concern. He misses a lot of plays, but he can make up for it with just crazy scampers and throwing off back foot. Like he does a lot of crazy stuff. He's like, he's like a raw addition of Patrick Mahomes. Like he has a lot of the capabilities to just make stuff up on the run that I really like. Uh, number four, I don't think you actually said this guy, guys. Uh, I'm going to go Russell Wilson. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the consistency. No, yeah, the offense, the offense uh, fell off at the end of the year, but DK Metcalf seems to be one of those guys where he's got an insane work ethic and wants to be the best of the best, and, and they have a great relationship. So uh, when you have a guy like DK on your offense, if they can figure out some of the holes on the offensive line, I feel like that they, I really hope that, that in this offseason that that offense got together. Like, let's figure this out. Like, we're too good to be as bad as we were in the second half of the season last year. So I, I still like Russell Wilson. My top three, I literally could shuffle around in any order, but I tried to do it as honestly, like if I was drafting right now and like I had to pick one, I'm going to go three, Josh Allen. Um, amazing, amazing season last year. Uh, really put it all together. We've never seen anything like it. I think he's going to keep that up. That offense is still the same. Um, so I like Josh Allen. Two, I'm going Lamar Jackson. And a lot of people have given up on Lamar. Again, similar to Kyler Murray, accuracy concerns. How much can he be consistent in the passing game? He's too athletic. He's too good. Like, he can do things that uh, I don't know if many quarterbacks have ever been able to do. So, I still love Lamar Jackson. I would love – I've never had him on my team. One of these years, I really want to have Lamar because I'm not one of those – like, I'm not going to draft a quarterback first or second round. Never have, never will. And there's always happens to be a guy in my league who does make that move, and it sometimes works. Sometimes it blows up in their face. Uh, one, you can't deny it, Patrick Mahomes. He's, he's the best. Like, I really wanted to put someone above him just to be a little different, but you just can't. Like, if I was drafting and I got a chance at Patrick Mahomes, I'm going for it. Yep. What about your reach and runs? Oh, 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 oh. I don't, uh, I don't want Matt, you forgetting that. Matt Ryan's dead to me. I want I want nothing to do with Matt Ryan. Uh, with no Julio. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they, they, they got the great tight end, Kyle Pitts, who's supposed to be fantastic. Nope, 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 nope. That guy is washed two to three in, interceptions a game, it feels like. Like, he's one step forward, two steps back. That is that is Matt Ryan. Um, and the, my my reach, is that what we're calling it? A reach? Yep. A reach and tickle, whatever you want to call it. Um, Jalen yeah. Hurts. Jalen Hurts. I don't think it's that. I think that's pretty common. People think that Jalen Hurts is going to have a big year. Um I saw enough last year. I was like, this guy, this guy belongs. Uh, he's going to get more comfortable in that offense. You bring in a Devontae Smith, who he's already familiar with in college. Uh, yeah, give me give me some Jalen Hurts this year. I think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback. No, um, definitely agree with a lot of it. Um, I really like your reach. <laughs> uh, I was really close for going with, with him as my reach, but um, I ended up not. So, um, yeah. I like how you also included the top three. You could shuffle any of them around. I think all of us had all of us had two of them in our top threes. Right I was going to say, yeah, Gaz, was yeah. Lamar like number six, Gaz? Yeah, so here's the thing with Lamar, and I love Lamar Jackson. I Again, I've, you guys have heard this a hundred times. I've got to watch him in the Carrier Dome. I watched him torch yep. Syracuse. He's the first player that individually I got to vote for that actually won the Heisman Trophy that I voted for first and actually won the award that year. So there's a little like – Okay, make me look good and make me look smart every time you take the field. Here's the problem with Lamar. And again, Kyle, I don't want to influence your rankings, but maybe this answer will. I feel like Lamar is more likely to get me a huge stinker than these other guys, especially late in the season. Like Lamar in the playoffs, and I get playoffs don't count for regular season stats. Totally understand this. But like Lamar has had these like 160 passing yard 60 rushing, a touchdown, and three picks and no passing touchdown games. Like, he's had some stinkers where you can put Lamar in your lineup and put up like a five. That's it. I don't feel like any of these other guys are going to have really huge stinkers like Lamar might. Now, like, like Chet said, he could have a game where he goes for 150 yards rushing. He ends up being a top 12 running back if you do his stats. Like, yes. Like, I, I'm, I'm aware of the Lamar Jet. I'm afraid of the stinker. That's kind of why I avoided Lamar as much as I do like him and think he's the most exciting player to watch in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey's in that mix too. Yeah. Um, so I'll jump right into mine. So I had I it was torn at my five A, my five, 
So I literally have a 5A and 5B, which 5A is just slightly above him. My B is Lamar. Um, but the one I picked over him, I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers. And you guys may laugh at why I'm going to go with Rodgers. I don't think his career is over. I think he is going to look to play football after this. Rodgers has been known to change plays in the huddle. Does Rodgers go after go for him all year long if he's still annoyed with the Packers organization? Who knows? But also, can't deny what he did last season, too. Similar to what you said, though, Chet, the pocket passer only does scare me a little bit. But um, I want to give Rodgers a shot in my top five. I always like – you'll see him later on and be like, oh, Rodgers a little? Sweet, thank you. Um, I definitely think Rodgers is number five for me. Number four, I'm the only one who put him on there. Uh, a bag of Doritos, Justin Herbert. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always open the Doritos, made it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like Herbert a lot this year. Um, oh wow. Ha- has Eckler hopefully knock on wood here? Um, obviously we all know what Eckler can do coming out of the backfield. Herbert, the best rookie quarterback season of all time. Um. I think he picks up right where he left off. Humble, humble, humble there. Um, picks up right where he <laughs> left off. Who the season, Kyle? Herbert or James Conner? Which one would you think would be? Conner more? still. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so give me Herbert at number four. Number three, I'm very high on this year. As long as he doesn't get hurt, Dak Prescott. Um, I have always been a, Pre- a Prescott guy, especially since year two, I think, is when his second year after he was a starter. Um, I mean, he can do it all when he's healthy. He's very similar. He's not as fast as Lamar, but he makes some of those Lamar as plays where you're like, where did that come from? And he also can sling the ball. So really like Prescott, obviously he's got an elite receiving core. Um, it's just, if can their offensive coordinator figure it out, I was really high on, um, the Cowboys last year and I got dumped on, especially after Prescott got hurt and then my Zeke, um, predictions got smoked. So that is what it is. And number two and number one, I mean, we all had them in their top three, Allen and Mahomes. Allen at two, Mahomes at number one. Um, I think it's closer this year than it ever has for the undecided number one fantasy quarterback that a lot of people could be thinking. Um, I don't think anybody in their right mind thought Allen was going to be the number one fantasy quarterback last year, and somehow he pulled it off. But, again, you cannot deny what Mahomes does, will do, continue to do with whoever he wants out there. So, um, Mahomes one, Allen two, again, I don't think there's any shock there. Uh, my run, Chet, he's er, he's in your top five. I don't like Kyler. Still don't like Kyler. Um, I know he can make those run plays. I'm not touching Kyler. I, Hey, maybe it comes back to burn me. I just – I don't like the quarterback style that he plays, so my run is Kyler. My reach, though, maybe a little bit less of a traditional reach, um, but if I see Joe Burrow available in rounds five or six – I might take, and I don't have a quarterback. I might take a shot and gamble because Burrow, with the weapons he has, could have an unreal year. Um, if he can stay healthy, um, I would fully expect that Bengals offense to be a lot better. Um, second year, Burrow obviously started the first, what, five or six games, blew his knee out. They're showing that he's going to be full recovery. So um, I personally would take a gamble on Joe Burrow. I think if he was there in like the sixth round, fifth or sixth round. I would, and that seems like that seems high. That's if I don't have a court, like say those my top five or six are gone, and I'm like, and I have my two running backs and a wide receiver, and you know, my my fourth pick goes somewhere, my fifth, I'm like, I have a late fifth. I wouldn't, I might look at gambling there. I'm not gonna lie, you. Wow. The I Joe Burrow probably, thing, I think you could probably get to some Doritos in the fifth round, fifth or sixth. I think Doritos will be available, <laughs> maybe some Lay's potato chips. I don't know. No, the new like, drink. That's like no, that's, nobody that's likes Lay's. Yeah, and the new drinking game, by the way, for the We Talk Fantasy Whoa. is Dorito <laughs> Match. Go like, ahead, what, what? Potato chips? What? I mean, they're fine. I don't know if they're elite, like Kyle said. Whoa, are we have to do a chip ranking? <laughs> We're about Mount we Rushmore. Had fifteen dollars <laughs> in the in the four rows of chips. Oh my god! I mean, Ruffles are the goat, right? No, I don't have one of the cone ones that you used to put on your fingers. Uh, what are those? 3D Doritos? Doritos? I think they're I 3D know. Doritos. Wait, what, no, what are those? No, he, those are a thing. What are those? I can't Pringles? Remember. No. Um, Pringles, though. Mm. All right, we're going to sidetrack here. Bugle, uh, thank Joe you Bur- 
You, you go, that's right. You yeah, go. Thank you. I kept you guys on like potato. Oh my god, Lay's potato chips. Those things are like crack. <laughs> All right, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say about. I mean, Lay's are good, but uh, Joe Burrow. I was gonna say I'm gonna hold that off for the mailbag question because I have an interesting one about that Joe Burrow question you just asked. The Kyler Not- Murray thing. Yeah, the Kyler Murray thing. I think the Cardinals can get to the Super Bowl. But the reason I don't trust Kyler Murray, I was a hater out of him coming out of college because he broke every stereotype of every NFL draft prospect you're supposed to have. I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury. Like, go through Cliff Kingsbury's record as a head coach. If you see what the Cardinals did this offseason, and I know Hopkins, it's when we're taping this early August, the question of what it's going to do is still out there, but they did what the Bucs did. They got super aggressive in free agency. They went all in some moves. Chandler Jones, again, if he goes, that's also a different question. But their coach was under 500 in college. And they got hired to run an NFL team. And he still stinks in the NFL. Like, he's the difference. What scares me about Kyler Murray. But like, fantasy-wise, he might be just fine. But, boy, he could even take maybe another step or vice versa. He might be terrible if he didn't play in a Cliff Kingsbury offense and he wasn't trying to get him on his team constantly. Uh, let's get into the – go ahead, Chet. Yeah. I was going to bring up a guy that I really considered as like a quarterback to reach on. I want your guys' opinion. Matthew Stafford. Yes. Love it. Love it. Like, I mean, that's been a a fantasy-ish relevant. Like, he's – it's because he was in Detroit. Detroit. You know, when you lose Megatron, like, yeah, Kenny Galladay was good, but, like, that team just sucked. But now that he gets – you combine Matthew Stafford with Sean McVay? If if you – Keep Matthew Stafford protected and healthy, he will put up elite numbers. I love that reach. It's it's again, I think it's it's not the same as Merle, but it's a gamble because like I said, he's another one who is if he gets hit, he you are you're afraid he's gonna break. But the dude can sling the ball. I love that. Love that reach. I yep. would have had Stafford at eight on my rankings if we went to like a whole top ten, which the thing with Matthew Stafford is I think we're all feeling the same way about this. If you leave a draft and you've got Matthew Stafford like late, that's a brag about pick. Like, oh, yep. look at my roster. I've got blah, blah, blah. I got Stafforded. You feel great because you waited on a quarterback and you got one like you both just said that points wise at the end of the season with McVay. If you told me you think Matthew Stafford's going to be a top five scoring quarterback, I don't know if I'm going to put up much of an, a disagreement because of how good that Rams offense has been in the past and the difference between golf and Stafford. Last one. Oh, I had one more too after you, Chet. Will Fitz Magic be fantasy relevant? No. Um, I, I, I am like, I'm on, I don't want to call it getting on the bandwagon. I think Washington could make a scary run this year. Like, I'm talking like NFC Championship run. Whoa! I am that in. They are a pretty complete team. If Fitz Magic has any magic left. I feel like every part of his career where we've expected him to be good, he has been a colossal nightmare. But if he just kind of goes in there, grows the beard, lets the chest hair go, like the Fitz magic we love, dude, because they added Curtis Samuel. They still got Scary Terry. Antonio Gibson was the real deal. And we know how good that defense is. Like, I was going to say, they only need to score 14 points a game. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, dude. I don't you I like me some Fitz Magic this year. I think he's like a solid, he'll be a guy you, you have to if you need to stream someone, if someone gets hurt, he's probably gonna be on the waivers, but also a bye week guy. If you can get fit, that's one of those you look two weeks ahead. You're like, all right, I'm not gonna have Aaron Rodgers in week seven. Fitz Magic is playing against the Cowboys, he might put up three hundo. Like right. that's how I kind of look at him as like I think he will be. He's going to annoy some people because he's going to get streamed and he might like win you a week and you're going to be so pissed that you got beat by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. So the, the last thing that I want to touch base on kind of like with the quarterbacks whole situation. So we talk about like streaming quarterbacks and everything like that. Is this one of those years that they, at, when you get to like number 12 for the quarterback, 13, 14, would you still feel okay? I mean, if you look at it, so we all, we named one through nine on, um, this this quarterbacks list that I'm just looking at real quick because I just wanted to pull it up just to get, just to refresh my memory. We didn't name Hertz was your reach though. We named him Tannehill, Stafford, Burrow, Cousins, Baker Mayfield. People continue to forget about. Um, like you said, you had um, 
Fitzpatrick, another person that could make a run if they could put it together because of the weapons, Daniel Jones. Um, this this quarterback here might be a little crazy to where you might not ever need to carry a second quarterback on your roster if you don't get like one, two of those top guys because you're like, eh, there's four quarterbacks on the roster. My quarterback's by weeks 11. All four of these have decent matchups. I'm going to use that roster spot for a rookie or somebody else just to, to, just to stash away. So is this one of those years where you even get to the 10th round and you're just being like, okay, I still, I still have time to get a quarterback. That's why I was kind of surprised with your reach on Burrow. Honestly, that's why I'm like, I think I'm with you 100% where I think Burrow could have a, a great year with the weapons that he has. Um, huge Jamar Chase fan uh, since his college days, go Tigers. Um, but yeah, like I think there's Burrow caliber players that you could get all the way, like you said, in the 10th or 11th round. And the most interesting part about that question, Kyle, that I love is that w- tiers, you hear this term a lot in fantasy, right? Tiers, like who's tier yep. one, who's tier two. When we start talking about like tier, I guess three to five, you're right. Like from nine to 17 is super close. Like every, which your mindset thinking about that was like, I can, if I'm at nine, like if eight quarterbacks come off the board, I can wait. But you could kind of flip it the opposite way and say, okay, if there's a huge separation between tier one and tier three, do you go against the grain and say, okay, I know everybody in this league is going to wait on quarterbacks. I can get Mahomes in, as Chad brought this up earlier, like I'll go with Mahomes in the second round because I'm just going to get the highest point score. Like, is there going to be a separation? Running backs is the greatest example of this of all time. It's happened more and more frequently. Like there's a good six. Then there's a couple good ones. Then there's a drop. Yep. I wonder if Allen and Mahomes and whoever you want to flirt with at three, there's those two and then a drop, which that's what's going to be fun about drafts this year is how quick in both ways those quarterbacks fly off in those spots. It's going to be very, very interesting. I think you're going to see those tier ones gone. See ya. And then no quarterbacks until the fifth, sixth, seventh round. It's going to be one of those like, wait, what? <laughs> He's still on the board? He's still yeah, on the board? How is, how is he still available? Let's get into the John Stone Supply mailbag. You can be a part of the We Talk Fantasy podcast, however you want. Also on social media, I notice, and we're going to get to this too, that some of you are leaving private messages so league members don't see what you're trying to do. Very good. We'll keep the DMs open. I love that people are leaving private messages so no one can figure out what they're trying to do. I am all for that. By the way, uh, G-O-Z, Gaza, GazaTheMedia.com. If you want to go straight email, that's a little less creepy, but if we get messages, we appreciate it. Anyway, it's going through. It's through Johnson Supply Company right there on 6th Avenue in Troy. Fujitsu ductless splits. Do you guys know what that is? That is an energy saving ultra low temperature model that can operate lower than 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I bet you two didn't know that, that it's efficient, it's flexible. And by the way, they're now carrying the J series VRF systems for your home, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. You're looking to upgrade Chet Kyle, or you listening right now, the place for you here in the capital region is Johnstone Supply in Troy. Don't forget about the Westinghouse that's made by Fujitsu as well for a more basic spit situation efficiency option. You're looking for that. Stop in Johnstone Supply in Troy. If you head over to 6th Ave, there's a barbecue place that's very close. That's your deal, right? Get the barbecue, then head over to Johnstone Supply in Troy to upgrade. Say hello to Tom, James, Kevin, Rob, whoever's working the front desk. Make sure you tell me you heard about it from We Talk Fantasy or Fantasy Football Podcast throughout the fall and the summer. Give them a call today. 518-272-5922. For more information, if you want to learn how to upgrade your home today, Johnstone Supply in Troy, 518-272-5922. All right, let's get into our questions. Yes, Kyle. Real quick, those those wall-mounted air AC units are awesome, by the way. There was there was a couple Airbnbs that I stayed at that had those things. If you want comfort in a single room, don't be getting one of those window things. Get one of those. Call John Sound because those things are amazing. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Absolutely make that call one more time for the number 518-272-5922. And again, you can reach us, social media, private messages, however you want for your mailbag questions. I teased this already. It came from TL via private message about Joe Burrow. One quarterback league. They drafted Joe Burrow in the 14th round. Now, again, only one keeper in this league, one quarterback 
Joe Burrow in one quarterback leagues. And Kyle, I'm going to start with you because you brought Burrow. Do you even consider keeping quarterbacks in one keeper leagues? It's it's I would I one hundred percent would. It's it's just this year especially. Who are your running backs? Did you get slammed with like a Connor and I don't somebody else that's a low tier running like a Devin Singletary? Like you went really early with like um two top tier running backs and you got stuck with those two. If you are in that situation, yes, one hundred percent. I would think about keeping him for sure. Obviously, I would prioritize my keeper positions as running backs, top tier tight ends, uh, top tier wide receivers, then quarterbacks. Um, I think there goes a lot goes into it. So right now, I probably would not keep Burrow just for part of the reason we talked about earlier. Um, if it was a Mahomes or an Allen, you got him that late. King, first off, congratulations. Um, but no, nah, I don't think you would keep him at a 14 when you definitely have an, a running back option, potentially a tight end option and or and or a wide receiver option for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. If it's one, guys, did they explain, is it like a um, it cost you where you drafted him? Yes. So 14th round would be taken off the board. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, nah, I just, I don't have to see the full roster, but I, that's really hard to do just because you're going to have a lot of great options. Um, and as, in our experience in keeper leagues, the running backs that get kept change everything because yeah. You might not even have a good running back left in the second round. And so if you're already in the bot in the second tier of running backs and you don't even have a tier one, you're it doesn't matter if you have Patrick Mahomes on your team or or a Joe Burrow, like you're gonna need much more help than that. So Agreed. yeah. And the, the only one that I actually uh would have considered and someone did in our keeper league a couple of years ago, if you got Lamar Jackson in the same situation, if you fell on Lamar Jackson in round 14. And we saw what he did. Yeah, you're gonna keep him because he's he's potentially QB one, QB two. Um, Burrow, I think we're we're high on him and we're hopeful coming off of the injury. I don't know how much better the offensive line is. You know, I I, I get a little bit worried. Like after what happened to him, is he gonna be more timid when it comes to running? So all those things, I was like, it's not necessarily a slam dunk. We know that Joe Burrow's a uh, QB one. Potential, call, yeah. You know, yeah, and I'm going to call my answer like the Shark Tank answer, where the idea is good, but the execution is poor. And what I mean by that is like we all agree on this. Like you don't keep Joe Burrow, but I know what this person's thinking. Okay, yeah. in a one quarterback league, like you just said, Chet, on those later round picks, I'm going to take a flyer on a rookie quarterback. Like I can take like the 40th best running back, or I can take like the 60th best best wide receiver in these like 15 to 18 rounds. But why don't I just draft Trevor Lawrence? Why don't I just draft Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson from a few years ago? These guys who may not start week one, like Lawrence is going to start week one. But okay, he's going to sit on my bench for like five weeks. But when I wrap around to 2022, there's my keeper because he probably would have went in a mid round. So yes, the idea of what this person is doing is a smart idea. Wait on rookie quarterbacks to hope to keep them in the future. But Joe Burrow's question marks at this point is just not – you're not going to play him for maybe a quarter of the season during your year. So I would – I'm with you guys, three for three on that. Stay yeah. away from Joe Burrow. And I think I think the big thing there too is if this was a three, four keeper league, that you're more than likely – I would probably roll the dice with him. You're talking about your one keeper. Mm -mm. No. Rob on Instagram writes this in. Rob wants to know – if you could prefer to have one of these two on your roster, who would you rather have? Jonathan Taylor or Naheem Hines? Now, I don't think he's asking who would you draft first. If you had an actual roster you're filling out, like if Taylor goes in the first round and you can get Hines in a later round, how would you play that? Taylor or Hines, who would you rather have on your team this season? Does that make sense to you guys what Rob's asking? Kind of. So, yeah. like, okay, so like, okay, let's do it this way. If you've got a lower first round pick, I think this is what he's asking. I don't think, I think we all agree that Taylor's the running back. That's not, you know, that's not the question. The question is, okay, bottom of the first round, Jonathan Taylor's on the board. Do you take him or do you pass and wait and take his backup in later rounds? Gotcha. I, I go Taylor. I think Taylor's going to, I, I know the whole Wentz thing just happened, but Taylor's a, a beast. I, I think you go get Taylor and then let Hines go where he goes. Um, I'm not a big fan of just drafting a guy for 
the handcuff unless you get to like those 10th, 11th rounds and somehow um, Christian McCaffrey's backup is still there. Then I, I think you roll the dice, but I think if, if Taylor's on the board and you have the option, the ability to draft him as long as you're not in the top five of the first round, I think you go get him. I'm going to break the rules. Both. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Both. If you want Jonathan Taylor, you got to get Naheem Hines. Because that's the way it's going to be. If one of them gets hurt or, you know, there could be times where they're both valuable enough to kind of like that, you know, Kamara, DeMarco Murray, where it's kind of flipped, where the better running back is is Jonathan Taylor, more of the workhorse, where Naeem Hines could be using the passing game. Um, but I, if I was going to draft Jonathan Taylor, I'd make sure that I'm handcuffing him with a guy that's as talented as Naeem Hines. According to Rob's Instagram, he's a huge Colts fan because he has a Colts tattoo on his arm. So I think he loves Chet's answer. I don't even want to give my answer because I'm sure that's what he's going to do now for his league. I, I kind of go back to an answer I had earlier in the podcast about bragging picks. And again, this is a lot of pride stuff. That's what fantasy football is about, talking trash and rubbing it in your friends' faces. You might be excited about the Matthew Stafford pick. Boy, if I've got a low first round pick and I'm going back and recapping my draft and I see, ooh, I got Jonathan Taylor in the first round. Like he was a really nice player at Wisconsin. He had a really good few games at the end of the season, which fantasy owners and, and managers get so excited about when someone finishes strong. I just wouldn't be thrilled about having him as like my first round pick. So I guess to answer this, I would go Hines because I feel like he could still steal some carries and play it that way. But Jonathan Taylor doesn't get me excited if that's my first pick off the board. Three All right. Ne- go ahead, Kyle. No, just three different answers. I love it. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Tom writes this one, and this is our guy Tom over at uh, Johnson Supply, which I love this. His company is a part of our podcast, and he's already asking about his league, which, yeah, I have a feeling he might be joining us in something coming up here in a few minutes. He goes, guys, I have Diggs, Hill, McCaffrey, Barkley, and Jackson. Again, <laughs> Stephon Diggs, Tyree Kill, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, and Lamar Jackson. I get four keepers. Who do I keep? Chad, I think you responded and said, what the hell? Yeah. I mean, that's just like, that is cheating. He, he drafted so well. Um, Holy cow. I, yeah, and I, think I, re- I replied, I think this would be a Facebook, maybe it was Twitter. Uh, you keep everyone but Lamar. Yep. Because those guys are just so elite at their position. Um, and as we've discussed multiple times on this podcast, a lot of great quarterbacks. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know if he made the disclaimer or not, but uh, it sounds like this is not going to cost him based on draft picks. Um, you just get to keep those four guys. And so if it's not even like a value thing, where like if you if you somehow have had Lamar for a couple of years and you have him super late in a round, if it's not even that, that's a no-brainer because you're getting, it was McCaffrey and Barkley, right? Yes. So two of the top four running backs and then Tyreek and Stefan two of the top three, like you should not lose a game. You will because fantasy football is dumb at times, but you will be favorited in every single week. And you can take that like for sure. That's how great that team is. Yeah. I, 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 it's, you, you, you don't keep Lamar, but just to play devil's advocate, say, say you had to keep Lamar. Let's just say that. I think the only one of those skill threes, the, the lowest one would be Barkley just because he's coming off that injury outside of that. You keep all four of those skill players, drop Lamar. Oh, man, that Barkley thing just teased me, Kyle. I thought the same thing. I'm like, ooh, because I have another mailbag, which was about Saquon Barkley, basically like why they hate on Saquon. That's not really a specific question, but we just answered it right there. The injury concerns still, the pup to start off training camp and how much workload in the knee, all that stuff, right? Like that basically answers it. Yeah, go ahead, Chad. In the press conference, he's going to be on some sort of pitch count. That's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. – that's the worst thing you can hear from a fantasy perspective. You don't want to hear pitch count. You want a workhorse. You don't want to be yelling at your TV on Sunday, throw him the ball, give him the ball. Like that's the worst because <laughs> we know how great he is. But this is also, you know, Coach Judge doesn't care about your fantasy team. He cares about the longevity of his one of his best players. Yeah, Jackson with me too. That's who I'm not keeping all the answers you guys said. So that's our mailbag. Keep the questions coming. That was nice, concise, all over the place, all different variety of questions. Keep those questions coming. I usually close with a trivia question, but I feel like this version of the trivia question is the league this year. Now, we had a chat. You were the commissioner of the media league we had last season. And by media, not Godzilla Media or any other media companies that I can't talk about legally anymore. Uh, I mean, Godzilla Media. 
So, so Chet and Kyle, you're, I think we might have to be tri commissioners here. Like the Albany Empire have multiple owners. We have to be multiple commissioners. How do we set up the Godzilla Media Fantasy Football League? What site do we use? How many teams? Let's talk this out loud. And if this part of the podcast, you want to be a part of the league or you hate our setup and how we're going to do this, let us know on Twitter and all those different spots. Uh, Chet, I'm going to let you go first because you were the commissioner last season. Let's talk this through together as tri commissioners. How should we do the guys of the media fantasy football league this season? So all of us are in leagues. Um, I'm probably in the, a league that I've been, you guys are in like a hometown league guys that you've been in for how many years? God, I'm old. I think we're approaching like 2003. 2003. Kyle's been in the Coliseum League, which is his hometown league, for how many years? Like eight or nine. Eight or nine. So those leagues, like, they're like set in stone. You know what I mean? Like, it's it doesn't change. The only things that might change are like the draft parties or the penalties or something like that. But like, you kind of just it's it's the same every year, and it's still fun. So what I did last year when we created this media league is like, okay, we can start brand new. We have a canvas that we can do. And so I, I wanted to do an experiment. And so in that one, it was my first time ever doing a two quarterback league, which I found super intriguing because as we mentioned, there are 10 fantastic quarterbacks in uh, the NFL this year from a fantasy perspective. So let's make it more interesting. Let's see, figure out who the best 10 to 20 guys are and make you have to make tough decisions every week. So with that in mind, I'm going to throw this out as like the basic of our, of our league. Would you guys want to try an auction league? I've never done it, but I like the idea that you have a chance at every player because we do the draw out of the hat and whoever gets, or if we do a random generator, whoever gets the top four picks gets the top four running backs. And you, and you're kind of left you're like shit. Well, I don't get one of those guys. And now I got to try to do a scramble in an auction. If you really want Alvin Kamara, or if you really want Dalvin Cook, use your coins. Go for it. Use your fake money to get those guys. I've never done it. I've actually done it in an NBA format. Um, got my ass kicked because <laughs> I quickly realized I do not know as much about NBA as I do about the NFL. Uh, like after like the top, tw <laughs> essentially after the All Stars were taken, I was very confused at who was being put on the draft board. I was like, wait, this is the center for the Portland Trailblazers? Who the hell is this? Um, but yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. I've always been intrigued because that, I feel like that's always been a complaint that people have is they're like, oh, you know, I didn't get the top four pick. Oh, what are they supposed to do? I was screwed. Well, here you go. You have a chance to get everyone. Here's what I say to the auction thing. And, and you guys are video gamers like me. You guys play. Here's how I compare an auction league. Us three. Fantasy football is our thing. I know we can handle it. I know if you're listening to the podcast, you can handle an auction league. But some people play their video games. I'll use my college football analysis for this. Some of you play your video games in the Heisman mode, like the highest level possible to try to beat the game. Other people play it on veteran mode, which is like two levels lower, but you can break all the school records and win the national championships and start as a one star and do it. I will fully admit I'm not a Heisman turn it on mode. I don't touch the sliders. I don't have... So I'm cool with like keeping it at this level and knowing at one point I could go higher. And I think that's, that's why I say no to the auction league. I know I can do it, but I don't want to make it harder for myself. I don't want to put the weights on my arms when I'm working out at the gym. You know how that's my answer. League works. Yeah, exactly. I, I despise the idea of auction, but as a, as a fantasy podcast team, I think we should probably experiment. <laughs> why do wow. you think that, Kyle? I don't know. I, I, th I honestly think it's just it's because what you're comfortable with, you know how to do snakes. That's it. No I, strategy for that. Exactly. And it's like, dude, I don't even know if I know strategy for it. Like, yeah, there are guys I'm like, oh, it becomes super interesting. I can see it being so frustrating where like you, you target a guy, you're convinced that he's going to be good. And then someone starts getting into a bidding war and your whole plan crumbles before you. <laughs> then there's the strategy of, hey, let these guys spend all their money. Then all yeah. of a sudden. You yeah. Get, yeah. Yeah. Let them go. Let them go crazy on, you know, Patrick Mahomes. Then you sit back and get Jalen Hurts for a dollar. Yeah. I actually think as a fantasy team, that might be a route we need to go. Because because what if somebody came in with that question? We we wouldn't really have much to say to it. So I don't hate the idea. I'd be willing to try it, especially with 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 the Godzilla Media League. OK, so here's my plan, then, is the person who runs Godzilla Media, which is weird to say out loud. 
because I'm still getting used to this role, but I have 16 potential people who I have listed. Did you say 16? Yeah, so I have 14, counting us, we have 14 contributors to Godzilla Media, which is really cool. It's a very, with just launching this thing and basically as a company in the last four months to have already 14 contributors is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Plus, we have two sponsors. Our guy, Johnstone Supply and Troy. I want Tom because they're helping us out. I want him in the league to represent. Uh, Our pal Dan over at Hooters, which is already being rumored that potentially could be the home of our draft this season. So, with two sponsors potentially taking spots, that would be 16 people as a member of Godzilla Media, which I think leads to this. I will reach out to Godzilla Media members, and if people say no to the auction, let's say we get it down to 10 people. 10-person auction league's not so bad. We get it down to eight people. I know it sounds like the league on FX, but we play everybody twice, and that's not so bad in a 17-game regular season. That could be kind of cool. So let's do this. If... We can get a majority of the 16 to say yes to an auction league. We will step forward. Now, if we get pushback from more than 16, it gives us more content for next week's episode. And then we reset. So I think that we leave this episode on a teaser. What will the Godzilla Media Fantasy Football League be? And if we want, maybe we toss this up on Twitter as well. We underscore talk underscore fantasy on Twitter. Maybe that's the vote, and we see how this plays till next week. And Chet, maybe even longer than next week, because you're about to get married, my friend. So we let this sit a little longer. You know, maybe, yeah, so getting married on Saturday, and then Costa Rica on Monday. So we have like a little window there where maybe on Sunday night, I, we can squeeze in a quick little pod before I disappear. I'm, no. probably, I'm probably not going to be in great shape, but... Uh, Chad, I, I will tell you and Kyle, you can say yes or no. I would advise against that. I would enjoy this time with your soon-to-be wife and not tell her you're taking time away from her to do a fantasy podcast. <laughs> My personal advice to Mary guy, Kyle, you can overrule me if you want. Or maybe Cam's that cool. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty I'm just gonna say this. We will be fine because I'm pretty sure Cam's gonna be on the couch as soon yeah, as Yeah, she'll be she's a she's a big napper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah, we uh, yeah, and I, I usually I'm able to like coax her to napping, you know. I'm like, oh man, four o'clock, Cam is couch looks pretty good right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it usually works every time. I'm excited forever when and where we're gonna see everybody next for our next taping of the We Talk Fantasy Podcast, and we get some answers to these questions. Again, be a part of it, social media and more. Congratulations soon to Mr. and Mrs. Chet Davis. Shout out to Cam and enjoy the upcoming wedding, my friend, this weekend. I want a bachelor party, so we're all going to be having fun this weekend. Weddings and bachelor parties for all of us this weekend. Let's go. Please. All right. Talk to you guys next week. See ya.